Chances are, this isn't your first DIY video you've ever seen. But, have you ever seen a dump find flipped to this? Or a thrifted item flipped to this? Or a bunny, maybe even two? I can't wait for you to see what I did with these. I thought I'd show you how I sell singular teacups or gravy boats or things that don't want to people don't normally want to pick up unless they need it for their set they maybe they broke something and they need that but the way that I sell stuff in my booth uh, like this is by adding a candle to it nobody wants to buy just a teacup and a plate but they may want to buy a candle so an easy way to do that is buy a really inexpensive pack of wicks that you could use for your candle or you could use the wicks right out of the candle from Dollar Tree. I buy the vanilla scented because I love vanilla and I think it smells in the booth really well and uh, people gravitate towards something that smells really good. So I have this pack that I, I don't even know where I got it. Um, and it was down in my stash. So it's a pack of small little wicks. You can buy them at any different size. I like to add hot glue to the bottom of my wicks to hold them in place. They need to be in the middle of the candle in order to burn efficiently. Now, uh, once you hit that, that hot wax hits that, sometimes it will release that glue and your wicks will float away. In this instance, mine did very well and they did not do that. So um, I don't know what makes them want to do that sometimes and sometimes not. But in the gravy boat, I added two wicks. And like I said, you can undo your candle from Dollar Tree and you can use the wick that's in there and not buy any specialty wicks. This is the vanilla one that I get from there. Those are $1.25 a piece. And I just unwrap it and I add it to like a double boiler type of thing. So this is just a makeshift old pot that I had and a cracked, not really cracked, but chipped uh, measuring cup. And I add that to the water and just turn it on so that it melt that wax down. Once I get enough that I think I can use, I add it to whatever I'm going to put my uh, make my candle in. So I had put my wick in there and glued it in and now I'm pouring my wax in. Now sometimes your wax will pull away from the edges. I use a heat gun and I heat the top and I move it around so that it fills up those edges and uh but that's once it's dry it's or once it uh cools down and gets uh all solid so here i'm just lifting up my wick because i want that in the center of my candle and i'm just using a skewer to hold that up i melted down a little bit more wax and added that to my little gravy boat here and this is really good because somebody can buy this gravy boat use the candle and then they'll have the gravy boat if they want to use in their in their everyday or fancy wear or they can add another candle to it and it can just keep on being decor so here i added uh, some wax and then i needed to add more i wanted to fill it up more and uh, the heat gun comes in handy in this instance if it if it solidifies uneven on the top and isn't smooth, you can hit it with the heat gun a little bit and move it around and make it nice and smooth. Now I trimmed down my wicks. I added a little bit of twine and a cute little tag. I think I got this from the Graphics Fairy. They were free download and I added it to a piece of cardstock and cut it out and then added it to my candles. These came out so stinking cute. I just love how this pink one came out. I think it's my favorite, but they're both really, really pretty. I did not get a finalized uh, picture of the teacup. Uh, I took it right down to my booth as soon as it was solid and I had them done. So now uh, you can see it in my booth, how cute they came out.
I love the shape of this basket. It's a heart shape and it's just a plain Jane. She doesn't have any color on her whatsoever. So I think I'm going to take some antique wax and use it as a stain and stain up my basket so that it has a nice dark rich look to it. Not too dark, but gives it a little bit of color. So I add it all over the basket, inside and out, wipe it back, and it gives it just a nice rich tone, a beautiful golden color, and I really love the warmth that it gives the, the wicker on the basket. So you're not hearing things. If you hear a rooster crowing, that is my rooster. I have chickens and I have two roosters and they both are in rare form today and just want to sit at the door and crow. I think it's because it's a nice day, the sun is out, and they just want me to come out and be one of the chickens today. So I got this uh, doily from a flea market, and I thought that it would look really great in this basket. The colors together I thought would really complement each other. And so I added it to the basket, and I like how the edges hang over, and they just look so so good together, I think. I also grabbed this greenery heart. This is a, a beautiful piece of greenery. And I think I got this at the flea market too. And I'm gonna take the hanger off and use that on my basket. I'm gonna add it to the top so that if somebody wanted to use it as a hanger, they could. It also could sit on a shelf. Um, it also could lay flat and you could put a candle in it. I thought of doing that as a, you know, for the, like the end photos. Uh, but I, I didn't end up doing that. But I love how this fits perfectly into this basket. And you may not really see the heart shape in it, but you know it's there. And I think this looks really good in the basket. I can't believe it fits so well. I love, again, the greenery and the doily and the color of the basket. All three of those together just make a great trio and I think it just looks so good. So right here I'm just showing you I'm taking that hanger that I took off the heart and I'm going to add that to the basket. There was a little wire attached so I just put it down through the reeds and then uh, just turned that wire so that it would stay in there. So if you wanted to hang it you could. Now I bought some Sweet Annie from a, an Etsy shop. I will put the link down in the description if anybody's interested. Nobody told me that this would smell so good. Every time you see people using Sweet Annie, they use it in their decor and I never hear how good it smells. It smells delightful. I love how it smells. I can't really explain, almost like a lemony, a light lemony scent. To me, that's what it smells like, but I really like it. So I'm going to add this to my greenery and give that smell. You know, it's just going to smell up my greenery really nicely, I think. It's not a super strong, and I think more the longer it sits out uh, in the open air, it kind of dissipates, but it's still there. And I think the little, the little seed pods that are on it look really good against the green. And this is just a, a pretty little dainty little basket. Maybe, uh, I guess if you wanted to, to label it, it'd be kind of shabby chic maybe. And I just love how this came out. So I didn't glue anything in again because it fits so nice and tight, that greenery. I didn't bother gluing anything in, but I am going to run some a jute twine around the outside of the basket, kind of diagonal here, as you can see, and I'm gluing it to the back. And then I'm gonna add a Dollar Tree bow that they come all made up. You can get four in a package. They have so many different kinds that you could get, and I'm just showing you here all the different ones. But um, I grabbed a few packs of those, and I'm gonna add some to my my little basket here and then this is going to be done.
little rooster up at a place that uh, did stuff by donation. And so I bundled a bunch of stuff and got him for uh, probably around $2. I don't really know how much uh, I actually paid for him, but I'd say it was probably around $2.50, $2, something like that. And uh, I got quite a few things, so it's kind of hard to really measure. But I really like uh, his shape and his size. I didn't like his eyes. As you could see there, they are white and there was no like black dot in there or anything. He looked kind of like he was angry or possessed. I don't know. Sometimes roosters can be possessed. Um, <laughs> so, uh, they can be kind of mean. So I decided I was going to paint him up and try some clear wax and then some dark wax on him and see if that would work well sitting down in the crevices of like his feathers and things like that and see what that looked like. So I'm taking my latte paint from Dixie Belle. This is a beautiful like a khaki color and I'm giving him uh, two coats. It was really a coat and a half. The half a coat was just touch up here and there. That paint is nice and thick and it covered him really well. I just wanted to make sure that I got all of the color and stuff off him because I am not going to uh, distress back. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to add some dark wax on him. Once he was all dry, I took a rag and added some clear wax on him. When you seal with clear wax first before you put your dark wax on, it helps to uh, kind of not get too much of the dark on there. So uh, it, will, it will help you get rid of it if it gets too dark, too muddy. And so I'm just adding it on there and then wiping it back so he has a nice coat of the clear wax on there. Now I'm gonna take some of the dark wax and I'm gonna add that to my little rooster here and see if I can get it down in between the feathers and just down in all the cracks and crevices. And then when I wipe it back, it's gonna give him an aged old look. So as you can see here, I'm brushing it all on and it's going on fairly thick. Again, you can control uh, how much stays on there with your clear wax. So that went on really nice and thick and now I'm just wiping it back, just going over the high spots and leaving as much of the dark in those crevices as you can. And I absolutely love how this guy came out. He is so stinking cute. Look at all the detail that you can see in his feathers because of that dark wax going down in there. I absolutely love it. could not leave this adorable little pup down at the free shack at the dump. I had to bring him home and give him a little bit of help. I had to rescue him. He is completely adorable, but he's chipped and he was dirty and he just needed a new home and a new update to his paint. So I grabbed my, after cleaning him up, I grabbed my latte paint and I went over him and I used two coats for this. Uh, it, it, it had a lot of detail. His fur is, uh, was very rough and which is great for the detail, but uh, you know, just to get that brush in there and get that paint all over, it took me two coats. So once he was all dry and I had the two coats on, I grabbed the clear wax and I went all over him with the co a coat of the clear wax and then wiped it all back. So he had a nice coating and sealer all over him. 
I then went over him with the dark wax and uh, just uh, just brushed it all in and tried to get it down in his coat and his fur so that it would sit down in the deep areas and the cracks and crevices. It seemed to work very well. I really liked how this came out. I really loved his face when I finally did his face. He has the little puppy wrinkles around his eyes and his nose and I could just smell the puppy breath even though he wasn't breathing. It was totally adorable and I'm so glad that I rescued this guy and I think that I helped him out so he will find a new home if I don't end up keeping him myself. We lost our dog back last spring and this just reminds me of how sweet they can be. project may be a little bit controversial, I guess, or iffy with some people. Um, this is a decoupage paper I got from Zazzle. Link will be down in the description. It's a beautiful bunny uh, tissue paper uh, decoupage, and it's great. I absolutely love it. And I got, I don't know, three or four pieces of it and I decided I wanted to do something different with it than normally put it on a piece of wood or on a cloth, uh, like a cloth cloth. Uh, so I thought because I had this, I had thrifted this great big piece of burlap that I may try and put it on burlap and see what it does. I know that it's a plasticky feeling when you use your Mod Podge and it's not really, uh, soft it gets kind of plasticky feeling that's all I can uh, describe but I grabbed my thrifted burlap uh, big piece that I had and I cut it down two pieces the exact same size I actually did four pieces but I'm only showing you the two uh, because I have two exactly the same so I'm not going to show you both of them so what I'm doing is just like you would any old uh, piece of wood or whatever you're going to use to decoupage. I'm taking Mod Podge and I'm adding it to the top of my burlap. And I'm using quite a bit just because the burlap sucks it up because it is a nice thick material. So I'm uh, just Mod Podging this cute little bunny paper right onto this burlap. Um, and so I do a little bit at a time just like you would any other uh, project that you were using it on and then I go over the top of it with more Mod Podge to get it sealed in. Now as it's drying you're going to want to lift it up and some I hit it with my heat gun a few times to get it dry a little bit quicker in the back. I did have a piece of um, uh, parchment paper I believe uh, underneath it so that it wouldn't stick to the tabletop or what I had on it. So you're going to want to need to pick it up while it's drying so that it doesn't stick because it does, the Mod Podge does go through the back to whatever's underneath it and it will stick, it will glue to it. So uh, you want to lift it up quite often and move it around so that it doesn't stick permanently. I took the other piece that I had cut out with it and I'm going to make a pillow with this if you hadn't guessed. Uh, I'm going to take my, I'm going to use this all with hot glue. I'm going to, uh, in just a little bit, maybe a half an inch to an inch, go in on the inside of that pillow, of that material, so that I can fray the outside. So I don't want my glue to be right on the outside edge. I want to give it a little bit of a lip there so that I can fray it. So I went too far down on that, so I had to lift it up a little bit. But uh, it's, it's hot glue is pretty forgiving. So now once the glue is, is all uh, cooled down and it's stuck down very well all the way around, I did keep one side open so that I could add some stuffing. And I'm just gonna go around the edges and pull out some of the strings. Burlap is really easy to do that with. Uh, for the most part and I had a few places where I'd pull it out and it would get jumbled and if you can't get it out all you got to do is trim it off 
just trim it to the uh, the length that you want it and that worked out really well um, but I went down quite a ways with that I really wanted the fray to 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 really show so I I took off probably I don't know four or five pieces of string and that left quite a nice long um, fray on there now I did both front and back. Again, your glue's in about an inch or so, so you have that back piece too. So don't forget it, because that adds to your fray as well. I took the inside of my scissors along the frayed edges and just kind of rubbed it along, and it fluffs them up and it gives them a kind of a rough look so that they don't lay just flat. And I think this works really well. I've done this before on other pieces, and. Uh, it, it just gives it a, uh, it just fluffs it and it looks so much better. I have my polyfill here, fiber fill. I got this at a yard sale like so long ago. It's crazy. Um, but it's, so it's kind of matted and, and not very uh, fluffed up. So I just pulled pieces out and just kind of fluffed it. I didn't want to stuff this super, super full. Um, it's not like you're going to actually use it as a pillow. It's just decorative and, uh, you know, it, it, it's just supposed to kind of stick out a little bit. So I um, just added just enough so that it would stick up a little bit and you'd know that it was a was a pillow. Now with, this is my second pillow that I did. My first one, I actually did the uh, other decorations first before I filled it. So that may be something you want to think about is uh, fill it for, I mean, uh, do the decorations first on the outside before you fill it. Makes it a little bit easier. It's flatter. Um, but I did not do that with the second one. I kind of was just going for it and I didn't even think about the steps that I had it in. Even though I was filming it, you'd think I would be thinking about that. Uh, anyway, so basically the decorations I put on the outside is, this is jute rope. I get this from Amazon. If I can find it, I'll put a link down in the description. It's a big roll of it because I use so much of it. Uh, and I just went along the outside edge of the picture and the... Uh, the burlap right along the edges there to give it a frame, I guess. And I have more of these uh, little flowers that I get from Dollar Tree. These are little rose buds or roselets here. And um, I put one each in, in the corners, in all four corners. Then I decided I didn't like the look of just the one string of twine. So I even though I had the roses on there, I just cut pieces long enough so they could tuck underneath the rose. You'll never know that I cut them separately and just glued them to the other piece of rope. You could kind of see the glue underneath that first uh, rope that I, that I put on there. So I wanted to kind of cover that up and I thought if I did a second rope around the inside that would add to the decoration of it, just add to the frame and also cover up some of that glue. So that's why I went ahead and did that. And I just tucked the ends right up under the roses. You'll never know that those were cut strips and not all the way, you know, like a continuous rope all the way around. You'll have to let me know what you think of these pillows. Would you do that and add decoupage to a pillow? guys for watching and don't forget to leave me a comment down below if you have a favorite let me know which one it is out of these projects and make sure you check out this next video i know you're gonna love it